Hello everyone, this is Simon from writtenlegalenglish.com and welcome to this week's redrafting task, week 27. For week 27 and week 28, we're going to be looking at a lease contract. There are, of course, many things in the lease contract, particularly this one that I found online, that we could analyse. We could even finish analysing it probably on week 47, but I've chosen these two clauses which look at um, two different issues but will require you to put your thinking caps on and think about how you can redraft them. So let's get started. But just before we get started, let me tell you about the content I put out every single week in case you're new to me or my channel. On Tuesday today, I put out a text which is overcomplicated and your job is to read it and to think about how you could simplify that bearing in mind plain language principles to communicate a plainer but yet still professional English language message. On Wednesday I put out a video which focuses on a particular writing error, why it is an error and how you can fix that error. And then on Friday I come back and I give you my analysis, my redraft of the text that I'm going to ask you to look at today. So if you want to catch up with me and all of the content that I put out, then please think about subscribing on YouTube, following me on Facebook, connecting to me on LinkedIn, or if you want to do my online legal English courses, then think about supporting me on Patreon. Okay, so this is the first text I would like you to look at from this lease contract. On the last day of the lease term, or on any sooner termination, tenants shall surrender the premises to landlord in the same condition as when received, ordinary wear and tear accepted, clean and free of debris, provided that, at landlord's request, tenants shall remove, at tenant's sole cost and expense, all cabling installed for or on behalf of tenant. Number of different things that are wrong with this sentence. The, this is one huge long sentence, it's filled with information in which is presented to you in clauses, you've got no idea what the main message is, you're jumping from one thing to another thing, what do you focus on, what do you remember, what's the aim of the author in terms of communicating this message to you, it's full of, or no it's not full of, but it's got legalese words in there, so we've got shall and provided that, which are contested words in legal English because they are ambiguous, and your job is to deal with this text somehow. So if the first thing I want you to do is to break down the sentence into shorter sentences. Now, you might choose shorter sentences, you might choose to tabulate. However you decide to do that, break this sentence down. And then secondly, redraft provided that and shall to make the sentence easier to understand. So I want you to tackle those uh, problematic legal English words or non, I should say, I should correct myself, problematic non-legal English words to create a clearer, simpler message. If you don't know what the problem is with provided that and shall, then please have a look at my videos where I briefly explain what the problem is. You'll see the links to those, video, uh, to those videos below this video in the video description. Okay guys, if you've got any questions at all, if you need any help, any pointers, then leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Otherwise, have a good think about that text and those tasks. And I'll see you tomorrow with my video from my uh, short professional English writing course. And I'll see you on Friday again with my suggested redraft of this text. So have a good week and I'll see you tomorrow and on Friday.